Hello and welcome to another AIC Productions video. Today we're going to be starting a little mini series on seeing if we can upgrade an older laptop to be something that we can use today. Um, the laptop you see in front of you is the one that is in question. This is uh, the exact same model of a computer I owned nearly 12 years ago. It was the third computer ever I bought, I shouldn't say computer, the third laptop I'd ever bought in my life. and it was one of my favorites I've ever owned. Now, this is partially nostalgia, uh, but partially this was one of the first computers I owned that kind of had a lot of modern features on it. Things like Wi-Fi as standard, and USB 2.0 ports, and a DVD burner, or CD burner, excuse me. It has a DVD drive CD burner on it. Computers I had before this still had a floppy drive on them. Uh, the one I had before that had no floppy drive. So just in order, my first laptop I ever owned was a Toshiba Protégé 610CT. And then the second one was an Omnibook uh, XE3, I believe. I can put links to uh, pictures of those down in the description if you're interested at all. Um, the Omnibook specifically uh, was kind of a cool system since it had a floppy drive and a CD-ROM drive. And you could play an audio CD without powering the laptop on. Uh, but this is a Compaq V2000Z. They had a couple different models of these. Uh, the Z specifically meant that it had an AMD Turion processor. It was one of the first 64-bit processors in a laptop, which at the time didn't mean a whole lot since some of the advantages you get with a 64-bit processor you can't take advantage since this can only have up to two gigs of memory. Now this one I did recently pick up off of eBay. I think I spent about 15, 20 bucks for it, including shipping. It just came today and I was going to boot it up and go through the BIOS with you, but I've run into a slight problem. I'll go ahead and power it up here. There is a BIOS password. Now I can reset that but to do so, I have to take the whole thing apart. And I'm going to be taking it apart anyways, and I'll go over that here in just a second. Uh, and so that's not that big of a problem, but I wanted to go over the system before I took it apart. Uh, now, this system does not have a hard drive. Buying it used, they didn't include the hard drive. So uh, I thought I had an IDE drive sitting around somewhere, but I don't, at least not a laptop one. Uh, I, I recently got rid of them because I figured I'd never use them again. Uh, and so what I did, and one of the things I wanted to do, was pick up an SSD that was an IDE SSD. Now this isn't uh, an SSD, uh, but they do make them. They're kind of expensive though. Uh, the cheapest one I could find was 32 gigs and it was $50 uh, with shipping. Um, I think it was like $45 and like $5 shipping. And then you could get a 64 gig one for $60. And I thought there's got to be a better way, so I found this. And this is an IDE2 Compact Flash. Now I've done Compact Flash before in a system and it worked great. Uh, and so I wanted to give it a go again in this system. And this one's kind of cool because it has two Compact Flash slots on it. So you can have a master drive here and then on the reverse side you can have a slave. And so I had this 8 gig Compact Flash drive from my previous project but I went ahead, and this was about $10. I picked up a second compact flash drive, a 32 gig, for, I want to say I spent about $15 on this. So uh, 10 plus 15, that's uh, $26. And I think this 8 gig was $8 or $9 when I bought it. So we're at about $35 total for this versus paying $50 for just a 32 gig and we get an eight extra 8 gigs of storage. If you want just the 32 gigs of storage, then um, you would be at uh, about $26. So, I did have to buy, pick up a hard drive caddy. This was about $5 for that. Now, when I bought this, it said it had 2 gigs of RAM. It does not. It only has a 512. So I'm going to upgrade the memory. I'll include that price. I need to figure out what those prices are going to be. And then I have an upgraded CPU. Now this one I'm afraid might be damaged. We're going to have to test it out and see. 
But this is a Turion 64 and it is a ML, I'm trying to read that there. I want to say it's a 37. So which I believe is a 2 gigahertz processor, this one. And the one that's in there is a 1.6 gigahertz, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. I was going to check on that when I opened the BIOS, but I can't do that because it's got a password on it. So when I bought this, a little bit about this laptop. When it came out, like I said, that Turion's the first 64-bit processor that was available in a laptop, as far as I'm aware. It uh, has a great keyboard. It was one of the better designed laptops at the time, as far as just aesthetics and the look of it. This was a... Now, Ken, that's, that's my personal opinion. It, it looked better than a lot of other systems I saw at the time. Uh, it does not have dedicated graphics, but it does have an ATI chipset which does have more powerful integrated graphics than the Intel integrated graphics at the time. Now, you're not going to do a whole lot of modern 3D gaming on this, far from it, but it definitely could do, at the time, better graphics than its uh, counterparts from Intel. This was a budget computer, and it was thin and light. Um, just as a comparison, it weighs about five, five and a half pounds, um, and it's a 14 inch screen. It is a wide screen. So I just wanted to compare it with my Asus. Let me, let me adjust my camera here real quick. This Asus cost me about $250. And the compact at the time cost me, I want to say around $700, $750. So it was a lot more money. And unplug it here. There you can see they're about the same size um, width and length, but the thickness, I mean, there's no comparison. The compact is twice as thick as the Asus. It's definitely twice as heavy, and for the time, it had the compact had reasonable battery life at about two hours, and the Asus will last you five to six hours. Now, why why would you try to salvage an old computer like this? Well, there's a few reasons. One, cost. This laptop, if I already owned it, I'd already own it. All right, uh, to buy it cost me. Well, I say about twenty dollars shipped to my house. This cost me twenty-six dollars. This was another twenty dollars. Totally not a necessity, I don't think. And this was five dollars. This was part of that. And I already have thermal paste because if you work on computers, you tend to have this floating around. Um, so I'm out of pocket less than a oh, little less than what about forty the. About $75, less than $75, and the Asus cost me $250. If I didn't have to buy the laptop, I'd be out around $50 right now. So that's that's definitely something to consider. If you just need something to do, some basic tasks, uh, you don't want to spend a lot of money on it. Uh, now, if this performs as well as the Asus, we're ahead. Now, if this is just terrible, it's not going to be worth it. Uh, the other reason is you could repurpose this. If you have some kids that uh, maybe they go on some basic websites and you don't want to buy them a brand new computer because they're kids and there's a high chance of breaking it. You know, I'd rather be out $75 than $250. I could build several of these for the cost of one of those. Um, other options are you're like me and you just like playing with computers and seeing what you can do with them. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and do a teardown on it and we'll reset the BIOS and, and switch out this uh, GPU, or not GPU, excuse me, the CPU, and uh, go from there. Um, I'll be breaking this up, so this will be one section, the initial interview, and then the next section will be the teardown. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.